I want to hear someone that, that say, hey, I'm going to create my own business. I'm going to get my own referral partners. I'm going to go after it, right? And the ones that are not crying about the market. Like you start talking to a salesperson and already complaining about the market and the rates yeah. and, or the, that's all they're concerned about. What's the bottom? What's the bottom? What's the bottom? <laughs> I'm like, you're not a salesperson, yeah. number one. <laughs> Anyone can sell something that doesn't cost anything. That's that's easy, right? Like even in our business, like how many people have left our industry? Like over 50%. Right. Because refinances, it's not hard to sell someone a savings of money. Now it's hard to sell someone at seven and a half, eight, eight percent rate right now. Yeah. So the true performers are the ones that are going to stay in this market and dominate. And when the market turns around, they're going to, they're going to just take over everything. Yeah. Right. So that's the mindset. So for me, you got to be hungry. You got to be positive. You're not going to be pointing fingers on people. I want to hear the background. Like I always ask people, I want to hear about you before I jump in. Give me your background. Tell me what motivates you. What What is your goals? Like, what are you looking for? Because I want to hear that before I give my, like what I do. Right? I don't waste my time and energy on someone that's not already going to be a fit for my company. So you learn a lot from people. But the one thing I know about salespeople is some people are, are good at selling themselves and selling BS. Yeah, right? yeah, so, right. You've had that. The ones that yeah, the ones that talk the huge game, 95% of them are, there. there's nothing going on. They're not going right? to do like, anything. Oh, yeah, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, it's a huge deal, and then you're, nothing, like, they come on, there's nothing going on. They talk huge game, they ask for everything in the world, and there's nothing happening. So, you know, you don't know all the time until you start working with them, but I, I always watch people, like, stay humble, but you got to have a good mindset perspective, and you got to be hungry, right? And that's that's the biggest thing in sales. Yeah, and it sounds like uh, you mentioned it, positivity. You don't want to hear someone else's negative crap when you're interviewing them right away. And, and they're going to be negative about other companies they work for or worked for, right? Because I'm recruiting them. So you're going to hear that. They're like, well, that's great. You know, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, but now we're on the phone. So now we're going to do some better things, right? That's what we're talking. So if you didn't have a negative experience, we wouldn't be talking right now, right? Yeah. They're like, correct. I'm like, let's move on. <laughs> nice. I love that. Sweep it under the rug and let's let's focus on what we need to do. Um, yeah. All right. And then you mentioned you have kids. How do you balance? I mean, do you have a lot of help at home? What What does your day look like? Because with my children, we're driving them here and there and then meeting and then now I'm doing the podcast and so forth. What does your day look like and how has your family dynamic been a part of that? Yeah. So very much the same thing. It's, it's <laughs> kind of keep everything balanced. So last couple of years, you know, when we, when COVID hit, we, we found an office place, like half my, half my uh, residence is my, is my office, my personal office as well. So now nice. I get to see my kids because I was always gone. That was a big part of a change. I have my gym here. I have my sauna. I've got my pool. There's no reason I ever have to leave this compound at this point, but I do. <laughs> uh, so, you know, for me, the daily looks, we work at, I always work out first thing in the morning before my kids and my wife wake up because that's me time. I don't want to focus on anything. I want to talk about business for my first hour of my life. Um, and then taking my, I get ready and take my kids to school every day with my wife. We both take them to the school. Oh, both do it. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. yeah we're one of the few, uh, the principal always says that to our kids. <laughs> like, you know, here are your parents drop you off. Cause yeah, I might never had that. I, I went on a bus for an hour and a half. Yeah, and yeah. back. Um, so no, and then we get back to the office together. Most of our meetings start around nine ish. Um, then we're throughout the day. If I, most of time we're picking them up together if we can, um, every day as well. And, you know, she, my, my wife would cook them dinner. I'll cook her dinner. Um, but yeah, we kind of balance it out. If like I have a meeting coming up, she'll go pick them up or vice versa. So we're, we're pretty good about juggling the things and communicating because all day long we're like, okay, you're going here, you're doing this, I'm going to the bank, I'm running over there. Right. So you got to communicate with your partner and, and get things done, but we somehow figured it all somehow out. Somehow managed it, it, huh? Uh, and how yeah. you, I think you mentioned, how old are your kids? Uh, you mentioned it my, earlier. My, yeah. My son Conrad is nine years old and uh, my daughter and he's fourth grade. And then my daughter is um, five years old and she's in kindergarten. So, so what, what are you teaching your son right now? What's kind of the motivation or how have you, for those that have kids that are listening, what's, what's essential? Because that's a very important age to kind of direct them of maybe what they should be in the future, how they should receive information and process it. And, and at the same time, how competitive they should be, right? Because I'm noticing like my daughters are in soccer and there's a huge difference between second grade and third grade in terms of physicality while they're playing and so forth. So what, what are you teaching say Conrad in regards to business and, and being a man at this point? Yeah. So the one thing I've never done is I don't talk to my children, um, like in a different voice. Okay. I don't, I talk to them like an adult. Like, so every day when I talk to my kid, like if you ask Conrad, if he's in here right now and ask him what the one ten is, he will tell you it's about working harder than everyone else in the room. I like he knows. Um, he also knows dad values, 
people that do things work hard and don't, I don't have to ask for him to do things. Right. So for example, I got this long driveway. Actually, I hate taking down the trash to this house I'm at right now for some reason, but I do it. Right. <laughs> but now Conrad started to do it. Right. And he, well, someday I'm working out. He takes them out on Sunday because the trash comes on Monday. He comes back and I see him doing everything and he comes and he's like, Hey dad, I took up the trash. I'm all nice job, buddy. He's like, and you didn't ask me to do, do so. And I'm all, that's what the one tenant, right? He's like, right. I'm like, and I appreciate that. And that, that shows me you're, you're listening to me. So he's more like this last year, he really jumped up a speed of motivation. Um, his, his teachers, like I, I talk to him every day about what success is, what manifesting is, what hard work is. I give him perspectives from an adult. Um, whether he gets all the information or not, I and mean, he's he starts like I, he's learning more than I thought, right? Like he'll start talking to my friend, and he'll bring up stuff. I'm like, oh wow, it is it is sinking in. But parents, like I think, try not to focus on adult things around them because they don't think they're gonna they're gonna understand it. But they're listening to everything, right? Yeah. So I don't I treat them like when they come home, you put your shoes away, you put your backpack away, you make a mess, you put it away, you're done with that, put in the dishes. I'm not doing this for you. So we have a nanny that comes, or, or she's more like a housekeeper from nine to. Mm-hmm two o'clock, four yeah. days a week, right? But she, not at this point, she's not even here when they're here. Um, but when when they were, I told the nanny, I'm like, you're not picking up after yeah. Yeah. That's not your job. Your job is they need to do their own stuff. And yes, there's a bigger thing you're helping out, but they're, I want them to do their own stuff, pick up their own crap, pick up their own messes and take responsibility for everything. I love that. And, I was, and, and they understand like, you know, they don't, my lifestyle now, these kids, what they have is, is my dream at that age, right? And they don't understand. Like you always try to give them perspective. Like, hey, I had a shitty van with wood on the side, and we grew up, you know, with no money in an eighty thousand dollars house. Now, you're, now you're in a ten million dollars property. Yeah. And, you know, you, you don't you don't know exactly what life is is about. Oh, it's hard to give that side. Right? Yeah. So I try to give them that perspective of things, and you know, but it, it, they're going to be different than us, and that's the biggest thing. But you have to drive them to work hard and make them understand like how we got there. So they know I work all day long. They're in the car with me. They don't dad and mom have to work to provide this lifestyle and they, and they get it. But I'm, but I also very direct what we're doing. I'm telling them why, why we're doing it as we're doing it. Yeah. You don't, yeah. You're, you're showing them that, Hey, this isn't magic. <laughs> and uh, you know, it reminds me, I just saw a uh, Michael Irvin clip on, on, I'm sure you know who that is a football player on the, uh, some show. And he's like, my son's a rapper. And he's like, I don't get it. You grew up in a gated community. You're rapping about my life. You know what I mean? Kids just don't understand the the other side of things. That's cool that you're showing them. And and I notice a lot of um, where you know our kids go to a pretty affluent school here in the Bay Area near Hillsboro or Palo Alto, mm-hmm. um, and uh, a lot of nannies tend to raise children. It's kind of weird. We never see parents drop off or pick up. It's like I'm totally um, against that. I'm glad you guys do it. I think it really. Uh, ups the level of of your children's development. So uh, that's cool, man. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, what inspired you to be a motivational speaker. Because aside from maybe getting more attention, what what's the reason behind that? Are you hoping to improve people's lives, or do you feel like you have a story to tell? I think it's a little bit both. I mean, for me, I never really had a mentor growing up. Like no one gave me this road. Right? It's been trial and error. Um, luckily, I've been, you know, when I was training, you know, training times for years, I was around a lot of successful people and I'm a sponge. I learn these questions. Um, and it's helped me progress as a person. But I never had someone say, Hey, here's what you do. Like my parents, you know, my dad will be working until the day he dies. They have no money. They have no city. They have no retirement. Um, you know, they, I, I come from a very humble beginning. So that's part of me. I never want to be like that. Right. I said more retirement at the age of 19 than my dad has today. Honestly, right? It's sad, but true. Yeah. Um, but he's worked his butt off. My dad did the hardest worker in the room, but uh, that's one part of it. You got to work, but you got to be smarter and you got to yeah. do things the correct way. So that's why, you know, going out on my own and building my own company was, was, was super important. Um, but I would like to inspire other people, you know, that come from very humble beginnings to take it, if they have the right mindset and help them coach them to get the next level. Like for me, that's giving back. Like most motivational speaking or events I do, it's not for the money. A lot of times I do everything for free. Um, for me, it, it's getting out into the, into the public. If I help some kid that just, you know, dominates it and, and at the end of the day says, thank you so much for helping me or giving me this mindset or it gave them a different perspective on life and it changed them. Like for me, that gives me goosebumps even talking about it right yeah. now. That's, that's exciting for me. Um, so that's, that's really where that stems from is, is just helping people like, Hey, listen, it doesn't matter if you don't have money. It doesn't matter if your family does have money. If you put hard work, you put discipline, you start, you know, surrounding yourself with people that are better and want to be better, 
you you can do it as well, but it's not going to be easy and it's it's not not going to happen overnight and you're going to put in a lot of time. And I would tell people the greatest, the biggest thing with success you have to understand is you have to sacrifice. And, I, and I'm very hardcore about it. Like I tell entrepreneurs, I'm like, you're going to sacrifice a lot. You're not going to go with your friends. You're going to say no to that happy hour. You're not going to buy, you know, a Porsche because you don't own a house right now. Yeah. Right. So you got to be, I'm very direct with the way I coach people, but you know, and I've seen people that, that take a hold of it and actually change your lives and, and thank me. And then that's, that's the greatest high I could do. So like us doing a TV show that we're working on right now, and I can do that on a bigger scale and, and help, you know, couples, you know, be their best in, in their marriage and their business and their family. Like, that's amazing. Match.com needs to get it together and, and agree to sponsor you guys. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, <laughs> you met, you met, uh, some cool people I saw on Instagram. You met, uh, Grant Cardona. I'd never met him or anything like that. Uh, so, you know, you were standing next to 10 X guy and you're one 10 X. How did that yeah. feel? Or uh, how are some of these people you met? Are they as humble and, or, you know, who's the coolest yeah. person you met? Well, I became, so Glenn Stearns is, is one of the coolest people I met, you know, personally, like, as far as his life. And he has a, a book that kind of goes through him. He comes very humble beginnings as well, and, but made to a billionaire status. And he's so mm-hmm. humble. Um, he's, and him and his wife have a really good relationship. So I told Glenn, you know, recently, actually, I, I told him, I said, hey, I've never been inspired by another couple wow. until I met you guys. Um, and, you know, just being a good person, he's genuine. So that for me is like, success is great. Being a billionaire is amazing. But if you're a genuine person and you want to help people and like you actually listen to me when I talk to you, that's the difference, right? So Glenn, Glenn Stern is one of those people. Now, Glenn, since we've met, he's kind of like mentored me in certain levels and the first person I've ever that kind of helped wow. me. Like I enough to mentor. Yeah. So he introduced me to Glenn, Glenn Stearns. I was hanging out with him last week. I was hanging out with John Elway. I was hanging out. Uh, Bear Habib 